whether it be online or in person at the Fayette County Extension Office. We are ready and open for our presentation, our last one in March for Job Club. Our agenda is, we're gonna tell about success stories. We're gonna ask you about what successes that you might have acquired uh, over the past two weeks. We have a main speaker. We're excited about that presentation as well. We're gonna share some active job leads as well as partner updates. And we next time at Job Club. Let's get this, all right. Our mission hasn't changed, is to provide a positive environment for job seekers to network and learn best practices in their job search. We meet on the second and fourth Tuesday of each month, and you can find the schedule of topics at www.ukalumni.net slash job club. I want you to meet our job club facilitators. This is our team. I'm Diana Doggett, and I am an extension specialist at the University of Kentucky with Cooperative Extension. Caroline Francis is the director of alumni career services at and with the UK Alumni Association. Amanda, Amanda Shagney is assistant director. Nicole Waite is the employment specialist with UK Steps and she's with Temporary Employment and we'll be hearing from Nicole a little later in the day. A big shout out to Suzanne Smith and Sonny Saylor here at the Fayette County Extension Office as well as Queen Sullivan, Christy Kaufman and Christy Codwell. Uh, they're behind the scenes, but nevertheless, so, so very important to our job club presentation. Job Club is currently hosted in a hybrid format. And that means that we are in person here at the Fayette County Extension Office and we have a live audience. Uh, we welcome anyone in the Central Kentucky area to join us. And we're hoping to have some satellites throughout the state real, real soon, perhaps in your area. We have a Zoom webinar option. And with that, chat moderator is available. We also are on Facebook Live. We have, that's for view only. We do not have a chat moderator or job lead newsletter to follow up. We always remind our attendees to review, check out our free job club resource packet. And again, that's online. Uh, it, is, it has a whole array of resources for your job search, and it will be something that I think you'll benefit from. Um, sometimes you'll just have a need, and uh, if you go to that packet, hopefully and probably uh, you might find an answer to, to your question at the time. We are always, always very emphatic about asking you to join the Central Kentucky Job Club Sherry Community on LinkedIn. This is a real great opportunity for you not only to network among other job searches and um, employers that are checking that LinkedIn site out, uh, but it also, we, we post uh, resources during the week, uh, during the interim that we don't meet, and we also put on job leads that have come in too late to get into our newsletter. So check out, be a part of our LinkedIn site. Employers and recruiters are always welcome at Job Club. And in-person employer guests are given a one minute set opportunity uh, to spotlight and to share a job lead that they might have. Uh, so later on the program, if you're online, we ask that you just raise your hand and we'll give you that opportunity to share. Watch your email later today and that will have uh, job leads that have been provided to us and posted uh, with the job club team. We're also always mindful of job, attend job club attendees that are conducting a confidential job search. And so let's be very, very conscious of their privacy, respectful. And um, we, 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 we obviously have always and always will um, conduct our sessions in that, in that manner. Again, check out our job search related articles that are included at our job club reminder email, emails. And then this is always a big one. Um, we always get asked, and especially my first timers, how do I get access to past sessions? 
uh, that might have a topic on them that would be really important to my job search. So those recordings for all of our sessions are available at www.alumni.net slash job club. So if it's resumes, if it's interviewing, network, LinkedIn, we have one, two, three, probably, um, uh, different perspectives, different speakers, different presentations on those topics. So be sure and, and check that out. We, we all want to give a shout out and welcome to our first timers, as well as, and I didn't even really mention that at the beginning, we'd love to know where you are viewing from. Uh, if you're online, we'd love to know where you're from. So let us know that as well as if you're a first timer. So do that in the chat box right now so that we can give everyone a, a special welcome and uh, remind you that later on this afternoon, you're going to receive a follow-up survey if you're a first timer. And this feedback will place you in our notification system so that we have the opportunity to share future programs. So you can scan the QR code below or on your screen uh, to complete that now or we will be in touch this afternoon. And as I mentioned, we are always eager to hear about success stories. So if anyone has one online or in our audience, we'd love to hear your success in the last two weeks or in the last month or, or whatever. Uh, so what do, what do we consider successes? We say that it's anything that's in your journey uh, for your job search. It could be, a revision of your resume. It might be that you um, have an interview, that you're uh, anticipating an interview, that you've expanded your network. You're, you're, you've, you've reached out to people in the past and you've shared that you're looking for employment and having getting some feedback. So whatever that might be, just let us know what success you might have achieved. Uh, and we are always motivated by hearing that uh, as we, as we uh, work toward job club sessions and topics you know, in the future. So do we have any online that we wanna share? Any in your audience that someone else might have achieved? Normally we always have the, the ultimate one where we someone uh, achieves employment and we don't have one of those today, which is very unusual, but I'm sure they're forthcoming. None on, none on our, in our chat books today? Okay. Well, we are ready and we are excited. Uh, Nicole is no stranger to Job Club. Uh, she is a team player. She is one of us, a team facilitator. Uh, we always love to spotlight our, our team facilitators because, you know, we're, 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 in, the, we're in the ditches here um, as we as we work with job club and clients. So we, we know um, that this expertise needs to be shared. And Nicole is the HR employment specialist at U the University of Kentucky. She works with She knows all about the application, what it takes to succeed in getting that application through, what are the critical aspects of it. Nicole, thank you for sharing today, and I know it's going to be great. Thank you, Diane, for that wonderful introduction. And thank you all for attending Job Club today. Once again, my name is Nicole Waite. I'm the Employment Specialist here in an HR in our employment, sorry, in our temporary employment department, as Diane has mentioned. Um, I have been working at the University of Kentucky now, oh my gosh, since 2013. Uh, prior to that, I left in 2011. So I came back to the university. I've been in different areas of the university. I've worked in healthcare and I actually, as a patient services manager, I've worked in nurse recruitment with recruiting for RNs and medical assistants. And um, I currently still support healthcare. So um, in many ways, I should say. So yeah, so today we're going to go ahead and just talk about those applications, maybe some do's and don'ts if you guys have some questions um, online or in attendance. If you have any questions, feel free to ask those questions uh, after we complete a slide and I'll try to answer those for you. If there's something that I cannot answer, we'll just answer it at the end of the slides, okay? 
Okay, so let's see here. We'll go ahead and get into it. The oh, thank you for telling me. Okay, all righty, there we go. All righty, so let's go ahead and jump into this here. All righty, let's see, is it coming? Nope. Okay, there we go. Okay, so our learning objective, uh, sorry, learning, um, Okay, the bullet points today that we're going to go over. So we're going to discuss what is an application and why is it needed. Of course, a lot of people, we know what an application is, but we're just going to go into a little more detail of exactly what is it? What's in an application? What are the employers looking for? What should you put in an application? Um, resumes, cover letters, CVs, references. Those are those are all different languages that we hear, different um, requests, you know, items that are requested by employers. So we're going to discuss those today. And once again, if you have any questions, when we go over either one of these slides, feel free to ask. All righty. So what is in an application and why is it needed? Okay, so of course, an application, it is defined as a form used for making a request. Okay, of course, we're making a request, but you are personally making a request to be placed in a position. And so what at this time, you know, applications are submit warrants to say created by the employers to get consistent information. You know, we get a resume and resumes are, they're personal. And so they're created in different fonts, different ways. They contain different information. So if the company actually uh, develops this application for many candidates to apply, uh, to, to, apply to uh, a, a particular position, then we're able to bullet point and look for those and filter for specific information. And so that's why we have that application there. It is for some clarity. It is to help us. So uh, let's see here, of course, a standard application is not just easy to, easier for us to review, it's actually easier for you to complete also. When you're building your resume, of course, you're talking about the skills that you have, but if you actually see this application and you see the information for uh, the job, things like that, then it's easier for you to actually tailor your skill, you know, plug, be sure to not miss putting in those skills that you have and things like that in the application. So actually seeing that job posting also helps you as well. Um, some people will look at an application and they're like, you know what, I have all of this information on my resume, I do not need to put this information in an application. Again, it's going to be time consuming. I encourage you to still complete that application. And um, the reason being, of course, as I already mentioned, we're looking for specific, employees are normally looking for specific information, and then they'll go into the resume. But if you do not complete that application, sometimes it can look bad on you. You know, it can look like, oh, this person is just disregarding the information that we're looking for, or, um, you know, they may, you know, they may feel as if they don't need to complete the application or whatever. And so having that is, you know, like I said, it's good for you and it's also good for the employer. But if you complete that application, there's usually a chance with employers for you to attach other documents, whether it be your resume, your CV, a cover letter, and those things are usually requested. If you don't need those items, it's usually there. But And, and also, uh, if you just want to include those items, sometimes it's listed as optional. But you want to make sure, no matter what, that you're taking out time to complete the application. Um, is it time consuming? It can be, but that's a good thing because you want to make sure that you're going through the um, the request for um, the information and that you're actually taking time to review it, review your application, review the job posting, and be able to put in the precise inform information. You don't want to miss anything. This is a great time for you to sell yourself. So you do not want to miss putting that information in there. Um, so yeah, take out the time to do that. Uh, some people may, you know, it may seem like it's taking you hours with many of the application systems, especially, you know, I can speak for ours uh, at the university, you're able to save that information and come back to it. The only time that you're not able to come back to that information is if you don't save it and the date has expired for you to actually apply. So taking out time to go back in there um, 
and completing it, it's just, it's okay to be able to do research. If you want to research, uh, I'll often men, uh, mention to people that sometimes they want to research what a job title means. Uh, everything's not always listed in layman like, terms. And so being able to go back and, um, I mean, do some research, go back, make edits, things like that. You can do that as long as it doesn't expire with most systems. Um, so collecting additional information, you're like, okay, what, what additional information? So sometimes we um, use WASH, as I hear, uh, and some employers would use information listed on your application um, for, like I said, for a legal document, uh, for validity. They want to make sure that what is listed actually in your application is true. Um, also, the additional information is used for, and of course, like I said, as a legal document, used to complete background checks. Uh, many of the positions that you're working in may require for uh, additional background checking. Um, there are some medical positions that I know of that actually require even fingerprinting. Um, drug screens, I should mention that with healthcare, there are drug screens that are required in some positions. And so you wouldn't think that all of that, would, we would need an application for all of that, but an application can be like a legal and binding document that says, hey, you have permission, you and your company have permission to uh, do these things pending um, uh, employment for me. Um, also, let's see here. Oh, yes, of course, with the background checks. Um, sorry about that. Let's see here. Oh, yes, we talked about validity. Okay, that's what I wanted to get to. Some uh, applications may request that you submit a, um, or that you include information about licensing, certifications. Uh, there are even some uh, positions they may, that may request for you to add a transcript. I know when I worked in nursing, of course, we're hiring people who have graduated and we wanna know that you really do have that degree. And so submitting uh, transcripts, uh, and some of those transcripts are not even just added to the application, but they're actually mailed into the employer, but we wanna make sure that we have permission to request those. Um, and even there are times where, I know when I was working in nursing that we would send out like a uh, private or encrypted links that you're able to submit those uh, uh, other documents to like transcripts or something like that. Um, and so that we're not holding up the, the application process uh, that can take a little longer sometimes. So even sending those into the actual employer, we just need your permission to do that. So um, those are some tips on, I should say some information on what is that application and what we're actually looking for. Okay, so what's included in an application? And some of this I may have already mentioned. Well, let's see here, what's to include in your application? So of course, um, we're gonna be asking about previous employers and even if you're comfortable with your current employer. This one can always be tricky, especially if you're working within a company and you don't want another, you know, your current employer or supervisor to know that you're actually applying for another position um, or another department or something like that. But um, a company name, of course, the address of the company, supervisor, uh, the name, title, and the name and title, I should say, of the position that you held in that company while in that company, um, contact information for that supervisor. This um, is a very good point, especially if you're gonna be using the supervisor as a reference. You wanna make sure that that supervisor also is aware, and we'll talk about that more as we go through the slides, that the supervisor is actually aware that you're gonna be using them as a reference. Um, so I wanna know <laughs> whether or not that's actually a good reference for you to use. You know, not, you, not sure why you, why you left that position or um, why you are considering leaving that position. So you wanna make sure that all of those things are accurate. Um, one thing to mention, if the company name has changed, so this is why it's a good time also to, another reason I should say why it's good to do your research when applying, um, what creating your resume, applying CVs, things like that, why it's good to do some research while you're doing these things and not just running through them, actually taking your time and paying attention um, because things do change, companies' names do change, um, spellings change, whatever it may be. So you just wanna make sure that that's accurate. Um, let's see here, job titles. The job title that you held may have changed. Um, it could have been a, I don't know, I don't know, John Doe. And then now it's, you know, John Doe 
I don't know, does IT and it could be now IT specialists. And so if you listed that and then, you know, someone calls and like, well, I'm looking for this position. I'm like, we don't have that position. So if you even want to uh, follow up with your HR department or someone to find out exactly what that job title is. Salary. Um, listen, your salary, if you could remember that, of course, is always great. You want to be fair to yourself um, when applying for these jobs. Usually, well, a lot of times the salary is listed. Sometimes it is not. It is okay to call uh, or do some research to find out. Um, also, if the salary is not listed, I should say, to find out what the salary or salary range for this type of position is. Um, a lot of people kind of steer away from that, like, well, I didn't apply because I didn't see what it was, but it's okay to at least do some research with the company, find out exactly what that is. Uh, but listing your salary, we're talking about listing your salary for the position that you are in. Uh, let's see here, dates of employment. That is actually considered. Um, and so uh, I wouldn't want you to um, panic too much if you can't remember the exact dates of employment. But listening, if you can at least find out, uh, let's say you know it was January of 1993 or something like that, and you don't know the exact date, um, that's okay. But listing that month and year uh, at the least would be sufficient. If you could contact the company and find that out, of course, that's great. But uh, we're just basically trying to, fill, as employers, trying to filter out how much time you actually spent in a position. And so if you have those dates, it's really the exact date. That's really good. Um, things like length of times in a position, well, I should say why it's important for you to list that. Things like that length of time spent in a position uh, can help us to determine uh, pay, like your experience, how much experience you have in that. So when you're, uh, when we calculate all these positions that you've been in, the skills that you have, et cetera, it helps us to calculate, oh, this person has X amount of years or X amount of months of experience actually in this position. And so we want you to be fair to yourself, actually. So that is very, and one of the reasons why that's important uh, when it comes to listen, listening um, the accurate dates of employment. So your major job responsibilities in a position, uh, of course, you don't want to be looked over. Once again, um, major job responsibilities, including skills, once again, so uh, transferable skills, we love to talk about those in job club. And so please, this is a, a time for you to go through that resume. Think about your older jobs. List out the skills that you have. Um, you can use, I'm not sure if you have LinkedIn or if you have a platform like access to a platform like Handshake. Uh, these type of platforms actually will help you use different, if you're looking for different words and you're like, hey, I know that I've done this, but I'm not exactly sure what it's called. These type of pl platforms will actually help you um, determine or give you some definition to what that skill is, and then you can list those in your application. Now, once again, it doesn't always have to be a fancy word, but if you're having a little trouble with um, defining what that skill is, then uh, those type of platforms are good. And of course, Google's good too, but uh, those type of platforms are good at, helping you, good at helping you build and actually helping you build a resume also so that you can filter out, like I said, some of those and define those words and actually put those on a resume or application. But uh, the major job responsibilities, they actually not, they don't actually just help you uh, as far as putting, the, you know, filling out the application, but they help the employer also. Um, but as far as helping you, when you're listing your job, major job responsibilities, and you look at the, um, the uh, job responsibilities of the posting that you're actually applying to that'll help you to determine whether or not you're a good fit for the job. Uh, and it actually does the same for the employer. And that's why you do not want to miss out if you feel like you're a good fit and you know exactly what's going on with this job. We wanna make sure that you include those major job responsibilities. And this is also a time if you do have that resume sitting there while you're completing an application, let's say if you have a, it's actually a good idea to have a paper one while you're sitting there on the computer um, completing your application and you can make notes of your resume on your resume. And that way, once you complete that application, you can go back and make some edits. Or if you don't have paper, of course, if you prefer, I should say not to use paper, you can actually have the document open um, while you're applying also. So that's just a, a tip there. Uh, accomplishments, recognition, and awards. 
This is actually a really good one also. I think all of them are really good points. But you always, once again, want to remember that you're here to sell yourself. So, um, it, it, of course, you may feel like you're tooting your own horn, but it's okay right here. <laughs> it's okay right here. But uh, I always like to tell, mention to everyone to make sure that you mention uh, what you've done, you know, with any accomplishment, recognition, or awards, what you've done that actually helped the team. Of course, you're talking about yourself, but how did that help the team? You know, what was the result here? Uh, why did you get this award? So um, listing those accomplishments also helps to recognize because sometimes the accomplishments, it may be something that was not even connected directly to your job. And so that's a, once again, a chance to expose those transferable skills. And then, oh, this person can do more than just be an admin assistant, but this person actually volunteered and helped to do whatever it may be at the university or at their company, um, something like that. Um, awards, once again, being recognized for something that may not be connected to your actual job. And so be sure to sell yourself. Do not sell yourself short when it comes to your accomplishments. Yes. Oh, you're fine. Can you go back to... Uh... Like LinkedIn, Google, and then was it handshake, or handshake? handshake yeah so some of the especially some of the universities like we use it here at the university um but a lot of the schools we have um not sure if you uh, graduated from university but they have a platform called handshake and it's literally you put in the different um you put in your jobs just like you went on an application, some of the skills that you have, and it just creates these bullet points for you. LinkedIn, like I said, it really mimics the same thing. So for, but for those who may be in school or just graduated, or even if you graduated in the past, if you want to contact the school like Career Center or something like that and speak to them about Handshake, you may have access to that. And they'll, it'll, it's a platform that'll help you build all seven. I, I need Got you, got you. Okay, sure. It's a great platform. I have it myself. Even though I'm employed, I still I've I graduated from the university, so I have access to uh, a handshake account also. So it's really good. You're welcome. Okay, here. So let's see here. Um, alrighty. So what's including applications, which we kind of talked about that already. Um, but this, these are some really uh, some other good points here. Customizing your application materials to every job. Uh, once again, this is why it's so good to review the application, uh, the job description, skills, once again, um, even things like lifting, um, walking, whether or not you're gonna be remote, whether or not you're gonna be hybrid, uh, in the office, uh, travel, if there's gonna be travel, things like that. These are all the things that you wanna consider, of course, when you're applying for a job. Um, whether or not it's on the bus line, um, these just things like that. So you wouldn't think like, I need to, yeah, I'm going to find all that out. Yes, you're going to find all that out or take all that into consideration why, um, when you're applying. So the customizing your application materials for every job, let's say that in your last position, um, the, the current position that you're working or that you're applying for, <laughs> It, at the top of that position, you know, maybe something that was at the bottom or something that you didn't do so much of, I should say, in your last position. It's okay to move that to the top if that's actually something that you've done. You know, it's just not highlighted. It wasn't highlighted as it would be, I mean, was, I should say, if it wasn't highlighted, I should say, in your last position, like it is for the one that you're applying for, it's okay to move that up top as long as you actually did do that job. So that's just an example there of uh, customizing your application for every job. Um, also, it's, it's okay to move that bullet point up uh, when you're editing your resume, um, just so that it's right there at eyes view and someone doesn't have to search for those type of skills or uh, that you possess when applying for a job. Um, I do want to go back. I may have gotten ahead of myself. Okay, customize your application materials at every job. When, um, and which we'll get to that here in a second also, but um, customizing your resume is also really um, a really good thing here because one thing when we were talking, when I mentioned that if someone does not complete an application, what happens? Does it necessarily, oh, well, I have a really great resume or I have a really great cover letter though, you know, it's going to explain everything. Well, the thing is, if we're going through a system and we're trying to be consistent and we're trying to be fair, then 
you want to complete that application. And it also gives the, you know, at that time, if the uh, supervisor or the manager goes on to open your resume uh, or your cover letter, this is a time to grab that information from the posting and, and, you know, create that cover letter that says why you'll be a good fit for that position, that particular position. But you wouldn't know why you would be a good fit for that position if you don't know all the details about the job, or I shouldn't say all the details, but uh, the details of the job that are listed in the job posting. But of course, if you go on to research about the details of that job, uh, of that particular title or job or whatever, that'll actually help you with the cover letter also. But we'll get into that here in a second. I just want to mention uh, another reason when it comes to customizing your application and, ma and materials. Um, taking out that time to see exactly what this uh, job, that particular job is asking for and adding those um, materials uh, for your application. So let's see here, take your time and read all submission requirements, questions and, um, and specifications carefully. Absolutely, this is a really good one also. Um, we have, I should say, we have supplemental questions. Uh, just for an example, and you really, once again, this is a time to shine. This is a time to say, hey, this is what I've done. This is what I have done. The application has not asked any, you know, the previous parts of the application have not asked me this. And actually, it's not even listed in my resume. But because you asked me this question, I do have some experience. I do have something in my past that I can list here. And so you want to be able to ask, answer that question to the best of your knowledge. Be clear. Uh, sometimes the questions may ask you about a length and assignment, how much experience you have in the length of that assignment, because you may not have listed something because um, maybe you think, oh, you know what, I just did that for three months. It's not enough time. I'm not even going to bother putting that on there. Well, those three or six months, let's say those six months may get you, you know, moved in the in the system, um, higher in the system if you actually have some skill versus listing no skill at all. So, you know, but once again, taking your time to read all um, requirements, questions, et cetera. You also don't wanna be just kicked out because you didn't pay attention to something. It may be required. Let's say you wanna get a job um, driving a, I don't know, a, a bus on campus or something like that, just an example, or some type of vehicle uh, transporting um, I don't know, students or sports athletes or anything like that. You want to make sure that you're actually presenting a CDL, that you're able to drive the type of vehicle that is actually um, going to be used for that particular job. So you want to make sure that we want to make sure that you're certified and we don't want you to miss out on adding that. And, you know, someone may come back and say, hey, I am qualified for this position and I did submit this application. Why did it kick back? There may have been a little part right there that actually tells you to include that license information so that we can run the background check. And so we can make sure that the um, licensings and certifications are valid. And so if you didn't put that in there, then we cannot do that. And so that would lead to uh, a partially incomplete application for the position that you are applying for. So let's say you did notice, uh, just to make notice of that, uh, make note of that. Let's say you did notice that you did not include a document. Um, most companies, I could say for our company, if you call in and it's not, let's say the posting has not closed, you know, uh, someone may be able to help you get access to actually add those documents on, not necessarily add it to your application, but to, to give us that information. Uh, but once again, that's only if the posting has not closed. A lot of times once that closed, just to be fair, once it's closed, it's closed. Um, and so, um, you know, if you still get, you know, selected somehow, or at least get a, a review or get some type of screen or whatever, this would be a good time for you to mention that you do have those documents um, and that, you know, that you may have looked over putting that in there, et cetera, um, because, or it could be listed, you, maybe you didn't put it on your application, but it could be listed on your resume and that you have those documents ready to share with anyone, et cetera, if granted an, an interview. So, um, okay, that goes into the next bullet point, of course, right there, and that's proofreading. 
Um, so proofreading and read again and read again. There's, ne there's never too many times um, to look over your documents or your application to make sure that everything is accurate to the best of your knowledge. We don't know anything about you. We're gonna research about you once you give us that information. So it's great for you to be able to proofread and make sure you're not selling yourself short. Do not sell yourself short, um, but just proofread. A lot of times also with proofreading, we may, it gives us time to jog our memory. I know with me, I'm just going to give an example for myself. Um, I believe when I was applying for this position, um, with proofreading and um, completing my resume, I was like, wait, you know what? I forgot that back in I don't know, 99, I did this, or I forget it. Oh, when I got that promotion in 2007, when I traveled with this job, I did do some training for like eight weeks. I mean, all of the, any experience that you have, anything that you've done, um, you can complete. I mean, sorry, you can actually include in your resumes. Um, uh, if you've been in an article, I don't know, let's just say you're a writer and you've helped to write an article or a book or something like that. You want to, and it was, in I don't know, 2003, you want to make sure that you actually include that in your CV, you know, so that's why it's really good to take your time and proofread. Now, of course, if you're just seeing this application a day before or this job posting a day before it closes, you may not have as much time to proofread, but still go over it, you know, once again, one more time before you actually submit it. And then of course there, we want you to be honest and include all of your skills, knowledge and experience without misrepresentation. Um, and I know this happens sometimes, you know, so I make it really anxious or whatever, but you don't ever, you know, it's it's good to not, uh, <laughs> not of course list something or say that you're qualified for something that you're not. Because once again, we're going to check to see if the information is valid. We're gonna do the background checks. We're going to reach out for references to make sure that this person can actually do uh, what they say that they can do and that they possess the skills, knowledge, certifications, licensings that they mention um, that they have. So oh, before I go on, do you have any questions? Chef? Kind of going through here kind of fast. The question online mm -hmm. was, is she handshake for um, UK students and UK employees only? Mm -hmm. Is it for UK students and UK? No, other universities do have handshake. And I know uh, uh, just one in our audience uh, did already ask that question. Um, no, it is not many universities. And that's something that you can check with the university that you've, I'm not sure who that is, that, that they have attended to before. Um, and honestly, I'm not sure if it's just with universities, but I do know that majority universities, that is something that uh, students have access to and, and most universities use. So, but yeah, I can certainly, and I can certainly, if that uh, person is gonna say, uh, I can certainly get back to them about that question to see if it's just for universities, but I believe it is. Someone just commented that EKU has one. Yeah, yeah, um, I know that Center has one, um, Wittenberg. Um, so yeah, a lot of them, yep, yeah, universities have it. Um, the next question is, some applicants view the resume as the most important document and do not spend as much time on the application, which was true for me last year when I was mm -hmm. applying. Um, could you explain the importance of the application to, um, to some employers, UK? Oh, okay. So, yes, once again, and that, that, the entire presentation, basically speaking about why that application is so crucial, and that it's uh, that... For one, like you said, it could be a legal and binding document. We're going to, uh, I may have already talked past this while before the question got um, asked, but it's a legal and binding document. We're gonna use that document to collect data. We're gonna make sure that information that you provide to us on your resume is valid. Um, and so, yes, the resume is, is good. It is important, but sometimes it may get looked past if you do not complete that application. And so mimic, some of the uh, uh, information is mimicked on an application and a resume, but make sure that you list those, the specific things that we're looking for to even make it, um, let's say the application makes us interested, it sparks our interest to say, hey, you know what, this person has meets all these qualifications that we're looking for. So now we're gonna go ahead and look deeper and we're gonna review that resume. Yeah. 
the questions are rolling in. Okay. Um, next, how can I find a proper name to address my cover letter to when applying at UK? Most jobs at UK never mention a contact name or a name to address a cover letter to, but career advisors say to address your cover letter to the correct hiring official. That is a really good question because, uh, and, that, and that is very true for some departments, um, some supervisors, and that's just to help, you know, we could have hundreds of applicants for one uh, posting. And so we do want to keep that, you know, privacy, that flow of traffic from coming in. Um, dear, dear hiring official, dear Sarah or madam, something like that. It, it's, it's perfectly fine to list something like that when you don't have a specific person to um, dear department for uh, official hiring manager, something to that effect is okay. Alrighty, so let's see here where we are. Let's go ahead and go into the next one, which we kind of, yeah, okay. So resumes, cover letters, CVs, or curriculum vitas, and other documents such as, such as licensings um, and certifications. I know I've touched on this uh, somewhat, I think through each, through each slide, but um, resumes, these are, I should say, these are the additional documents sometimes that are asked for with um, completing the application. And usually it's specific on which ones you need to, uh, to actually attach. And as mentioned, sometimes it's optional, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's required. And if you not add these documents, then um, that application is not considered as completed. And so once again, that resume that we discussed, you know, tailoring that, uh, of course, I don't want you to stray away from what you actually are, what you've actually done, or what work history that you have, but this is definitely a time to look at that job description and uh, kind of build that resume around, or listen those skills, I should say, at the top of your resume that shows, hey, I do have what it takes to, to do this job. Resumes are typically a couple of pages long, um, and for some of us, of course, uh, I know I've been working since I was about 14, so... <laughs> We, I don't want to list things that are going back that far, but I want to list things that are um, actually, you know, uh, that kind of tailored towards that job, maybe not going back, you know, past like 10 years or something like that. Um, no one wants to know, know that much about me, but things that are, you know, specific to, uh, to that job. Once again, cover letters, like uh, the question that just got mentioned, um, some employers, of course, if you know the employer's address, but not their name or the company's address, uh, it's okay to list that there. Um, but once again, if you do not have the name of the hiring official, listing dear sir or madam, hiring official, something like that is okay with the cover letter. And this is also a time for you to say, this is what I've done. And in addition to what I've done, this is what I plan to bring to the team. This is what I plan to bring, plan to, bring to the company. And so uh, definitely spend some time on that cover letter, review it, make sure that you're you know, using the correct wording. Um, but it is very important, um, in my opinion, to discuss, hey, although this is what I've done, this is what I can bring to the team. This is why I'm a great candidate. This is what I can do. I can't wait to come in and shine type of mindset. Like literally, this is a just, this is you advertising yourself now. So those cover letters, um, definitely take out some time to work on those. CVs, uh, curriculum vitas, uh, once again, these are usually used for, um, let's say, I shouldn't say more professional jobs, but let's just say something like a professor or you had someone who's going into a position where they have, um, I don't know, like you said, written a book or some journal articles, things like that. Um, you know, these are gonna, these do typically tend to be longer. Uh, they're no amount, I should say, uh, um, should say no amount, but let's just say they're, they are typically longer. It's not limited like a resume is because there's, you know, there may be, I don't know, I don't know how much information you could put in there uh, because of course it's tailored to each person, but it's not limited. Let me say that uh, because uh, like you said, the number of books you've written, the type of awards you've got, recognition, and maybe be some travel or things like that. You may have spent time in another country, teaching a class, whatever it may be, but you want to definitely take out time to um, work on that one. And this is actually something that you've probably built up as well as a resume, uh, something that you've probably built up over time. So I just I definitely want to point that out, the resume and the CV. That's stuff that you've probably built up over time. The cover letter is going to be specific towards that position that you're actually applying for. Uh, let's see here. Other documents in which I've already uh, mentioned that already. 
the licensing and certifications. Um, so uh, it, let's say nursing, of course, absolutely. You're gonna list that in there. Um, nursing, pharmacy, um, anything that is required for you to actually, to be able to even be in that position, to have a title as that type of um, person or that type of career, you wanna make sure that you have those and you that you actually have that license number because we're just, we're gonna uh, definitely check the validity of that license before you are hired in a position. So you wanna make sure that that's accurate. This is also a time, I can tell you there have been some examples. This is also a time that you wanna make sure that your licensing and certifications are up to date. Uh, there have been times where someone may have completed an application um, let's say a month, I'll just give an example, maybe a month before their uh, document actually expired. But when it was time for them to actually transfer into the position, their license was expired and they had to go and renew it before they could even go into the position. And of course, that not, not only holds you up, that holds up the, the company, et cetera. So you wanna make sure that these documents are up to date. Um, if the address on there is different, you know, it's okay to mention that during um during your interview that hey you know i just relocated to kentucky or i just relocated to whatever state you're in and uh, i'm working on getting that license um or address updated etc so this is a great time for you to actually review those documents as well i would say once you read that job description and you actually see that these documents are going to be required that you look to see if those documents are within expiration and things like that do you have any questions before i move to the next one okay sure question is it okay to use the same template of a cover letter? I feel it's unrealistic to come up with 100% original cover letters every time if it's the same type of job. That is a good question. And I'm actually glad that, uh, that our um, attendee asked that question. I did want to uh, mention that being mindful when you are using the same documents, and this has happened, don't forget to change the title of the job. <laughs> This is definitely, I'm going to say someone else probably has seen this done before. Do not forget to change the title of the job. Um, because remember, you are tailoring this letter to that specific position. So if you have a template, okay, that's just fine, you know, but just making sure that you go over that. And also, also the company name, that has definitely happened before also, when someone was sending in a cover letter and they forgot to change the company name. So yeah, creating yourself a template, I don't see anything wrong with that, but just making sure that you actually go through and proofread and change all the information that needs to be changed before submitting. Okay, got another one, sure. Next one, I have multiple degrees. Should I leave off some should I leave some off of my resume? Is it, well, I should say, to sh hmm, I was gonna say, if it's more so just trying to shorten it, I wouldn't say so. I wouldn't say leaving those off and actually maybe listing them at the top would be great. Um, but it, instead of taking off the degrees, maybe take off other uh, little fine details of each. Uh, let's see here, the jobs that are listed, maybe shorten up the, the skill part of the, uh, or should say the things that they've done under each job instead of actually taking off those degrees. I think it would be good to keep that on there. Okay, sure. This is a UK question. It okay. says, I hesitate to apply to positions at UK because it requires providing my social security number. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Ooh, that is a good question. And so, of course, um, we here at the university, like I said, the information that is shared with us, it is encrypted, it is safe. And that is because we have several applications. Let's say, I'm just going to throw a name out there, Brian Jones. When we receive applications from hundreds and thousands of applicants, there may be, and literally this happens daily, there may be 20 Brian Jones listed in the system. And so when someone calls in, we want to make sure that we have a birth date or a social, and we're not going to ask them their full social security number, but we at least want you to be able to uh, validate uh, those last four digits of a number or something like that that says, hey, this is who you say you are. And of course, we're, we have an email, but it's just, it's another safety level. It's another checkpoint because we want to make sure that you say that you are, that you, that you are the actually the Brian Jones that 
you know, we're looking for, et cetera. So, but we do want to mention that that information, it is, it is completely safe. And it shouldn't be asked for more than once, so. Sure. So someone online actually answered this, um, but I thought you might want to add to sure. it. Sure. How do you write a CV, which I believe is the mm -hmm. curriculum vitae? Mm -hmm. And um, somebody said there's lots of resources online for free, but I thought maybe you had something specific that you wouldn't want to share. Absolutely. Yes, there are resources online. And I would mention taking advantage of career centers. And, um, and of course, if you're in your current, if your current employer does not have a career center or a career coach or something like that, even visiting a library or um, somewhere like a small business center um, within your city or town or something like that to actually get help with that would be great, especially if you've never done it before. Uh, but typically, even if you with someone who is going to submit a CV has of course attended a university. So you can even go back as a graduate and request or schedule an appointment to meet with someone in a career center to help you get started with that CV. Okay, all right, okay. All righty, so let's go on to the next one here. We're almost done, you guys. Okay, so references. Oh my gosh, this is one that uh, I deal with a lot of references, so. <laughs> This one is near and dear, dear to my heart. So references, of course, you want to build those relationships now. Um, you know, the, the old saying, of course, you know, don't burn a bridge or you may have to cross that bridge again. Not necessarily, but uh, <laughs> you want to build those relationships now, you know, making sure that, hey, you know what, in the future, I may have to cross paths with this person again, or I may apply for a job um, that's similar, or maybe it's not a similar job, but I at least want to be able to build a relationship with someone who can actually attest to the information that I'm sharing, you know, about, you know, on my resume, or that I'm sharing when I'm applying for a job, or in an interview and says, hey, yes, this information is accurate about this person. Um, so yes, you want to be able to build those relationships now um, when, while working, you know, like you said, just for future employment. I'm not sure if you're going to leave your company in the future or not, but still you want to be able to build those relationships now. So let's see here. Carefully consider what information someone might share about you. So that's exactly why building that relationship now is, is um. It's good because, of course, you know, you may have to put down a reference and something bad may have happened. And, of course, we don't all have good days. You know, there's always something that happens. But um, someone that you made a reference may actually use that information for good. They may share a, a information about, hey, there was a time where this situation happened at work and um, John actually came through and shined, you know, actually, you know, even though. He may have missed doing this by um, X deadline or whatever it may be. What he done as a result, you know, what action he took and the result of that action that you took. Um, so, you know, like you said, building those relationships now with someone that says, hey, you know what? Yeah, this was a bad, because we do ask about, sometimes we will ask about a bad situation that happened and how it was resolved. So you want to be sure um, that you have someone that can actually help discuss that Um with you not in a room, I should say, that reference that's listed on uh, a piece of paper there. So carefully consider someone's ability to share information written in verbal capacity and company policy. Oh, sorry, let me read that slowly. Carefully consider someone's ability to share information written in verbal capacity and company policies, okay? Ask permission before using someone as a reference and provide full contact information on your references. And we discussed that briefly in the beginning of the slides about um, making sure that the information is accurate, names, phone numbers, emails, things like that. Uh, and of course, yes, you want to make sure that, you know, if you've been looking for a job for over a year or something like that, and you change your references, or someone may not know that you're still looking for a job and you have them listed, you have a reference letter for, from them that's uh, several months old or a year old or something like that, you want to be sure to just touch base with them and kind of let them know also where you are in your um, job search process um, so that they're aware that they may receive these phone calls or emails from a company. Um, let's see here, actually. Okay, just some tips because this is actually, yeah, this is, this is actually my last slide, but uh, some additional tips, uh, which I've already mentioned, I would just say proofreading, seriously taking out time to complete those applications, 
resumes, having someone, like you said, if you want to go to a library or to a career center um, or even a close, uh, you know, friend or something like that to look over your resume or something like that before you submit it or add it into an application will be great. But as far as the application itself, because that's what we're talking about, it is it is important to fill out those um, required areas in the application for, like I said, the reasons that have already been mentioned, legal and binding documents, background checks, um, add licensing and certifications, supplemental questions that you may not have put on your resumes or cover letters. So um, that is it. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to go ahead and ask those before we move on to the other slides in job. Okay, we got one. Okay, we'll get, we'll get you next. Okay. Online, it says, I have two master's degrees from an online accredited school, but I've been told that these degrees are not as good as a degree from an in-person school to put on a CV. Is this true? Oh, that is a good question. And honestly, I would, if you want to, if the candidate, uh, I'm sorry, the attendee that asked that question, if you would like to email me uh, or stick around and I can uh, definitely find out about that one. Um, that's a good question. I would, I would, I would think that it would still be okay to include that information, but yeah, I definitely would like to uh, ask that question and follow up. All right. All righty. Hi. Hear me? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm Doug. Uh, thanks Hi, Doug. for having me. Uh, the question is with regards to references. Yeah. Um, in my job hunt, if you will, I feel I should just make like a, should I, should I, is it a good idea to make a, re, a reference sheet or a re, re, reference template? Because I find myself hitting my phone or hitting my phone book or something, looking up these references, even though I have their approval, mm -hmm. just like an easier document, just to like have like a reference sheet, just so when I go fill out the applications or I'm online, it's mm -hmm. just right there in front of me. Absolutely. Thanks. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, that's um, having the, well, are you talking about adding it to your resume or just having it for your, just for your general information? I'll say letter C. No, good. Okay, thank you, thank you. So yes, it is good actually to have those rolling documents. Um, even um, let's say when, like you said, when you're going to apply for different jobs, having that information readily and available is, is great. It doesn't necessarily have to be attached to your resume. I know with our application system, we actually have sections for uh, references listed there. So if you have those, being able to copy and paste it over, et cetera, is great. But if your resume is only one sheet and you wanna have those references in the back of there, that's okay. It's not needed if you're putting it on an application, but it is definitely great to have. And thank you for bringing that up. All right. Any more questions before we before I hand it back over to Diane? We're good. Okay. All righty. Well, thank you guys again. If you have any questions that did not get answered, or if you have some that you think about, uh, feel free to email me or email someone in, in Job Club, and I will definitely take out time to answer those questions. I have attendees email me all the time. So thank you again for listening. Thank you for coming. And um, I'll talk to you guys again about some job leads for steps. All righty. Thank you, guys. Thank you Nicole. <clears throat> You're, you've just been listening to someone who does this on a daily, daily basis. So she knows her stuff and uh, we appreciate you sharing with us today. It was just a wealth of information. And again, if you have any other questions, be sure to let us know. Uh, we'll be hearing from Nicole in just a few minutes again and she could take the opportunity to answer those questions at that point. All right, we, this is a time when we do um, talk about job leads. So if you are an employer with an active job lead, please make your uh, way to the podium now. I don't think we have anyone um, here today, but uh, if you're online, please raise your hand and we'll give you that opportunity. Uh, if you would like, you can email us your job lead by noon today at job club at uky.edu, and we will include that in our email newsletter later on this afternoon. Diana, we do have um, one person online. I'm going to allow um, Tanya to speak right now. Okay, thanks, Christy. Thank you, Christy. Um, I'm Tanya Parsons. 
and I am with the Kentucky Small Business Development Summer Center, also called the SBDC because you can flood the name up if you say it all out. And we are seeking a business coach uh, to assist small businesses in the Central Kentucky area. Um, coaches assist entrepreneurs through launching new businesses, growing and diversifying existing businesses, and collaborating with owners on an overall business plan development and strategies, just to give you an idea of what our regular uh, job tasks are. And this position is a UK Steps position and coaches primarily work remotely. And I will provide my information for today's after uh, email after the job club. And you can reach out to me at tanya.parsons at uky.edu if you have any extra questions. Thank you. Great, great. That sounds like a great opportunity for someone who um, has those skills. I think and we're Diana, we do on. have um, one more employer online. Um, Krista Martin, I'm going to give you speaking privileges now. Oh, she went away. Okay. Never mind. We might hear from her later. Okay. She's back, I think. Oh, okay. Krista, you have you should have speaking privileges now. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Awesome. Sorry, I was just being so proactive and lowering my hand. <laughs> um, so my name is Krista Martin. I'm with Direct Employers Association. We are currently recruiting uh, for a remote software developer. So anybody that has experience in Java and C Sharp, we're uh, looking for somebody who has at least three years experience for that. We're based out of Indianapolis. Um, this is a remote position. It starts between 55 and 90,000 a year, depending on experience um, and qualifications. So if you or someone you know uh, is qualified, I definitely encourage them to apply. I'm gonna put the link uh, in the chat. And then we also co-host the National Labor Exchange with the National Association of State Workforce Agencies. So I'm going to put in the site for Kentucky as well. And you can utilize that to search for jobs, internships, apprenticeships, employers, and other things. It's uh, fully accessible and indexed and vetted on a daily basis. So um, this is your trusted source in uh, searching and connecting uh, with those jobs. And just good luck in the job search, you guys. Huge fan of Job Club. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we had we've had several attendees that are in that field recently, so this will be great uh, information for them. Uh, so if you could give us that information at Job Club at uky.edu, and we will get that and include it in our newsletter this afternoon. Thanks again. Are we okay with that anymore? All right. Now we're going to talk about our job club facilitators, our news and programs. We'll begin with the Cooperative Extension Service. Uh, we are always very, very, very um, eager to tell you that Extension is doing so much throughout the state. Uh, in fact, in all 120 counties. So we're always proud to, to say that we are a state that uh, has local grassroots and that we are, we are uh, serving the people wherever they are in Kentucky. So be sure uh, as spring is springing and uh, we are getting into all kinds of wonderful uh, programming and resources for outdoor work. And, and um, we just want you to, to, to take advantage of that. So check out the Fayette County Extension Office as well as your local extension office for what's in their programming for the next month. And now we're going to hear from Nicole again. Um, she again is going to give us some updates from UK Steps. Alrighty, so uh, thank you guys again for attending today. And we have, I have five jobs listed here and I have a couple more that are on the way. So I'll go ahead and jump right into it. Oh, I do want to mention that the jobs will be shared later in a newsletter that is sent out to every uh, attendee if you've shared your email address. Um, also, well, I should say in person and um, online. So the first position that we have is a disability outreach specialist a staff writer for our Department of Social Work, 
a program coordinator for the uh, Office of Lifelong Learning. And then we have a, a web developer position for the College of Social Work also. We have several medical assistant positions in UK healthcare. And I do know that we have several admin position, administrative assistant positions open also. And as mentioned, as those are still coming through, um, we will have those sent out to all of you um, after noon today. And so um, these jobs will also be shared on our LinkedIn page also, I believe it is. So uh, be on the lookout for that letter. And thank you guys again for attending Job Club. Thanks, Nicole. Uh, again, take advantage of that. Uh, if you're in a situation where perhaps you need that interim job, um, you've been out of work for a while, this is a great place to plug in. And uh, your future could be very, very bright at UK having uh, taken advantage. Yes, we do have a question. Well, that's me. I'm, I'm, first of all, I'm sorry I'm late, but yeah, my name is Doug Cavalli. Um, I'm lost. I'll just be honest. I, I took a leap of faith uh, in the restaurants for 30 years successful restaurants for 30 years. Um, I've been out of work for like the last month. We want to give, we're going to give you the mic here real oh, quick. So okay. <laughs> um, I've been out of work for like the last month, uh, successful in restaurants for the last 30 years, uh, took the leap of faith to make a job change or an industry change. Uh, that all being said, I, I, I feel I need a mentor or a coach or uh, because what I've been doing the last month, I've been working, but I've been working and trying to find that job search and Everything, I'm glad I came today. And I'm sorry, again, I was late. But what I'm doing is I feel like I have that double barrel shotgun and I'm just shooting up against the barn and I'm just hitting every, and I just, yeah, I just need help. Okay, all right. <laughs> Well, we're glad you did come. We're glad you uh, took the effort and the time to do that. And, you know, I want to emphasize that that is why Job Club is doing what we do. And coming in person, as you have today, is, is going to really... Um, I'm old school, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, no, I'm really going to point out it accelerates uh, your ability to reach out to get help. And so we would just encourage you to do that. If you're in the Central Kentucky uh, location, come see us personally at Job Club because we do talk afterwards and it will be beneficial to you. And we plan to do that with you today. Um, and again, we hope to have some satellites throughout the state that will offer that same opportunity. So um, thanks again for, for coming and we will talk in just a few. Okay. All right. So UK Alumni Career Services, uh, Caroline and Amanda are not with us today, but certainly on the slide, you can um, uh, take away, the takeaways there are amazing that they do provide so many great services and uh, individual services, which uh, sometimes are really needed uh, on, on that basis. So be sure and check out their website and all their offerings at www.ukalumni. Uh, .net slash career, and you could, will see all of their many, many, many benefits and programs. Next time at Job Club, making expungements work for your communities. I can't tell you how many requests that we have had for this program. Um, sometimes we think about status quo, and we just, you know, we're rolling on with those who have you know, not many difficulties in that application process and finding their idea job, but for many, that's not the case. And you may know someone that's in this situation. So we really, really want you to help us to market this program. Uh, we don't do this one often, but we, again, have had so many requests that we're going to um, really, really appreciate that Dennis Ritchie will present uh, he's a director of reentry and young adult services with the Goodwill Industries. Um, they have a focus with this program, and he will be sharing just how we can reach out and help uh, those in that community that is much need of this. So again, if this isn't for you, but you know someone that could benefit, please help us market this program, which will take place on April the 11th. And until then, on behalf of the University Cooperative Extension Service, UK Alumni Association of the UK uh, Human Resources, we thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again on April the 11th. Have a great day.